Uh, I've been at Twitter for about three and a half years. Um, the role I'm in right now is Director of Content Partnerships and Amplify. And what that means is I work with publishers to help them scale how they publish content and how they monetize that. So what's really interesting about video on Twitter is the speed of innovation, particularly in about the past year. I'll get into some of the products we have, give you a path to understanding which product to use when, how video can go further, and then the general video user experience on Twitter. So to understand where we're going, it, it might help to see where we've been. I'll read this tweet out. This is Twitter two years ago. If you remember Twitter two years ago, really was very, very text heavy. So this guy, Carson Stork, just did the swaggest three whip I've ever done during a solo sesh. Now I'm that guy that claims while riding alone. Does anybody know what he's talking about? I don't. Well, he's a mountain biker, and he's insane. Except Twitter two years ago, he couldn't actually show you what he just did. But Twitter today, he can show you with a video. Three, two, one. Start. Absolutely insane. The, the video is like three minutes long. We can watch it later if you, if you want to stick around. Um, also two years ago, uh, monetized video wasn't possible. So we didn't have an Amplify program. We were still just experimenting with some early partners like Turner and NASCAR and ESPN. Um, but now we have an ability to actually monetize puppies playing football. You'll see a short pre-roll billboard in front of this clip. We talk about speed on Twitter a lot, and I'll be talking a lot about speed today, the, the speed to publishing, to getting data back so you can make quicker decisions. But sometimes it helps to slow things down. This is during spring training. The Detroit Tigers team just pulled out their iPhone, and they shot this video, and they slowed it down and published it within seconds. And it's not just publishers and advertisers, it's often people who help videos go more widely on Twitter. This is an example from Jake Tapper. So he took a CNN video of a broadcast of something that just happened. And he noticed something funny in the video, this poor man slips on the ice. Well, also, if anyone's a New Yorker here, you know that uh, this was only about a month and a half ago. So still pretty timely but not like today when it's going to be 100 degrees. So watch this. Poor guy slips it on the ice. It is really cold in New York City. Check this out. About 19 degrees right now, and the city on the state of alert because of... So there was 50 retweets just from that tweet alone, which is awesome because CNN has whatever, maybe 15 million followers. Jake might have 10,000. He sends this video out. Now CNN's video is getting extra distribution just from his tiny little comment. And it's not just people or puppies that are getting into the action, it's actual objects. So this is a drone capturing a wave in Hawaii. Still probably beat most of the team riders. That's Matt Bemrose and Jason Shibata. We have live action here. From the drone, Geiselman locks in a beautiful pipeline wave ridden. He gets spit out. And we've made it super easy for anybody to be a content creator. With Vine, which is about a year and a half, two years old now, makes it super simple for anybody to just pull out their phone, capture a moment, and then the special unique looping feature kind of draws you in. It's pretty mesmerizing. It's 
says Hedgehog Jazz, if you can't read. And then finally, big moments can be captured like never before. Instantly, we become broadcasters. We take you directly behind the scenes, just from a phone. So here's Periscope. This is actually probably the best perfect match of the power of the platform, which is live and also a democratic way for anybody to capture what's around them and share it instantly. So to understand how you can think about video on Twitter, it helps to think about what makes Twitter unique. And the things that makes Twitter unique in video is the same thing that's made Twitter unique all along. We're mobile. So we started mobile with a basic tweet and we continue to be mobile. It's a live platform. And also, most importantly, it's a social platform. It's public. I can put a tweet on any website, on any blog. If the video or photo is embedded, it distributes directly where that blog goes. So let's think about mobile for a second here. Uyala publishes their quarterly report looking at specific video trends. They have a ton of video data that they're collecting on their servers. And Q2 last year, Uyala saw that 30% of all online video views were mobile. And that's over 100% year-over-year growth, which is great. And we've been hearing about this trend. Mobile's the future. Mobile's the future. Well, just after launching our video player, we were directly in the future. 90% of views on Twitter are coming from mobile devices. So reaching a mobile audience where they're engaged, where they're tapping, 90% of the video views on this platform are happening on mobile devices. So what are those mobile users doing? A lot of them, 73% of them, watch TV. They tune into TV, they pull out Twitter, they get ex extra information, they follow actors, they follow shows, they retweet, they comment. It's really become the norm to use Twitter while watching TV. And not only that, we see attention really shifting to the platform, particularly during big live events. This is some data we did um, or we gathered with Comscore, where we looked at publisher websites versus Twitter and the traf traffic before and during those big events. So you look at something like the Oscars, 62% lift in time spent on Twitter during the Oscars. Same thing with the Walking Dead premiere and the VMAs. And then if you sort of zoom back in to a specific episode, here's some data that we have around the finale of the show, Empire. 500,000 unique people during that one episode tweeted about what they were watching. And on average, those 500,000 unique authors tweeted about five times, generating almost two and a half million tweets. And then the extra level of impressions, how many tweets were actually seen about this show. Again, this is one night, one show, 112 million impressions were generated just about this particular show. And if you combine all of this, the mobile usage, the live nature, the social conversation, it's a perfect example for a publisher like Viacom and Spike TV and an advertiser like Smirnoff to join together and give users an awesome short mobile clip. So this is an Amplify program that we just ran last month. Um, and it's a great show, Lip Sync Battle, if you haven't watched it. You'll see a short pre-roll, which is the Twitter ad, co-sold by Viacom and Twitter, in front of a really timely clip. There's a 90s R&B theme going on here. I'll, I'll show you later. So how does video fit into all of this? And I think this room is probably more interested in learning the different tools, um, how video can get on there. Well, the best part is Twitter is building basically all of the dirty, nasty stuff around transcoding, file format transformation. We're making it super easy for anybody to take any source of video and get it into that great user experience that I showed. Some of this has come through acquisitions. So with Vine, 
Also launching our monetization play with publishers with Amplify. We developed our own player, which is called the Video Card, and it's really the core experience that you see throughout video on Twitter. Snappy TV, which is now a free B2B platform I'll go into a little bit more later. Our video ad product, this is a product for people to drive views, targeted views, and just pay only when the view happens on a cost per view basis. We launched in January a mobile camera that ships directly with the Android and iOS Twitter app. A recent acquisition, maybe not necessarily square in the middle of the video world, but it's Niche. So Niche allows up to 10,000 really amazing content creators to be connected with brands through a dashboard to make branded content. And then most recently, of course, with Periscope. So users don't care how all these things come together, right? They just want this amazing, amazing, mesmerizing mountain bike ride on their phone. And so if you think how all of the different sources on the left-hand side come together, we're mapping our different products to those different sources. So if you think about TV, we'll take any video source, HLS stream, RTMP stream, run it through Snappy, give you a super easy way to publish a video clip. From mobile, everyone in this room can capture a Vine or a Twitter video from their phone or live broadcast right now using Periscope. You can if you, if you want to. Um, also, if you have VOD clips from PC, we have a really basic uploader at video.twitter.com. And then, of course, any video that's captured through a GoPro camera, a wearable, can all make it easily directly into this player. So let's look at Snappy TV and the TV perspective. So Snappy is the easiest way to clip something that happened from a live video feed and publish it to Twitter in as little as three seconds. This is our partner MotoGP, which is a really heavy user uh, of the platform. They can clip something up directly into a, what we call the live event. You literally can sit in, your, in the bathroom with a laptop and clip, clip this content up and publish it out. Key point also is it's a really advanced stack for video analytics, um, ad serving, as well as Amplify campaign management. So this is an example of an Amplify campaign we did with MotoGP and Bridgestone. And a key thing about Snappy is we are continuing to develop and make the platform more and more flexible. Again, I wanted to say that it's free to use. It's the most powerful way to get any live video distributed to Twitter, but also other platforms. Today, you can still publish to Facebook, to YouTube, and OVPs. I'm particularly excited to announce a new feature that is MRSS ingest. You give us an MRSS feed, and we'll fully ingest all of your content that you mark from any of your custom CMSs supporting the platform, Brightcove, and Uyala. And if you're a publisher who doesn't necessarily have the power of live, the power of, say, live news or live sports, you can now actually program Twitter as if you are live. We have a tweet scheduler that we can use in conjunction with MRSS to tweet videos as they're aired. So it's a really amazing opportunity for those who've been trying to tap into the social conversation but actually don't have a live product to clip. From a UI standpoint, we show views across devices, across platforms, and a new tracker, which is time to social. Since we're ingesting Tribune metadata, we know when things air, and we know when you publish. So we can show you, hey, your social team's getting clips out in about 30 seconds, pretty awesome. Or even worse, your clips are making it about an hour after the broadcast happens. I'll show you in a bit why, why speed even matters more. So moving to mobile. The mobile video camera experience is super simple. It's been out for a couple of months. It's very easy to just pull out your phone, shoot what's around you, and upload a 30-second clip. So every user on Twitter has access to this right now. Everyone in this room can shoot a mobile video, upload it, and within seconds, 
It's a media forward, rich video in timelines. We have a really basic editor where you can move clips around. You can drag something up to delete it. And then just simply tweet it out. I want to show this example here because we think it's a really, really easy, lightweight, and easy form of publishing. This is with a partner of ours, Fullscreen, which is a large YouTube MCN. This gentleman here, Issa, was on the, the blue carpet, I guess, uh, not the red carpet, for the MTV Movie Awards. And this was part of an Amplify program here. So uh, just someone in production pulled out their phone, captured this moment, tweeted it out, and it was part of a paid campaign on Twitter. Next up is Vine. Tell a really, really simple, fun, engaging story in six seconds with loops. What's cool, and I mentioned Niche, a lot of the content creators from Niche are making content for brands. So we, we saw this sort of launch or proliferation of, we called them sort of vine magicians, making really awesome vines, really cool tricks. This is one such magician here, Zach King, that HP tapped to make this vine. And HP loved it so much, they actually turned it into a TV commercial. Oh, oh, oh. great about this it's kind of the opposite of snappy right with snappy you're taking TV content and getting it onto a mobile device here we're taking something of a shot on a mobile device and turning it into TV content so in the array of mobile capturing we've got vine we've got the Twitter mobile camera and now Periscope so it's the easiest way to show live content wherever you are I'll give you a couple of examples here so when we launched there was a fire on 14th Street, and I think you remember this. Pretty amazing. It was like an hour after launch, and this happened, this fire. And so you see all these different angles. And what's really unique about Periscope is it's not just capturing what's happening right now. There's an interactive element. So you see these content bubbles and these hearts flowing. So the hearts are a signal, and a new form of lightweight engagement to tell you, you as the broadcaster, hey, people like what you're showing. Show more of that. It's also a new currency, and who has more hearts? But these comments are a key thing. So you're getting actual feedback from users as you're broadcasting. And we've made it very easy now, just with a tap of the screen, to go back and forth between selfie mode and normal mode. So right after the fire, this guy jumped on Periscope. And we started thinking this is a really interesting way to do Q&As, celebrities, um, behind the scenes, product launches, whatever it might be. And then a week later, Alan jumped on board. You want to dance? Really, play some music. What kind of music? Go! See, 90s R&B. It's in your head. So uh, leaving you with best practices here, and, and the fun part about any new product is we can't be too prescriptive of what to do. A lot of partners will say, well, how should I think about Vine? Just tell me what to do. I want to do the most engaging thing. Um, Periscope is so new, we just have a couple of best practices. A lot of them are common sense, but they go a really long way. So the very first, have a plan. Have, have a rough idea of what you're going to shoot. Think if talent is involved, talent probably wants to know what's coming, that they're going to be live, if they have issues with that. Um, give them a heads up beforehand. Also, 
it's a live broadcast. So as people hop in, be prepared for them not to know what's going on. And that's why it's important to narrate. Early, early on, you saw sort of the best periscopes were people who were engaging. They were, they were talking to you. They were answering questions. There was this funny meme that happened uh, where people started asking, show the fridge. What's in the fridge? I don't know if you caught that. But it, it lasted for about a week. But it also showed off that people are going to ask that question. And there's going to be someone asking you to turn around the corner. You're actually sort of driving what you're seeing rather than broadcast TV, which is one way. So think about that. You have to narrate and really engage with the audience. Be mindful of length. Um, you could probably just do your own analysis to see what length works best for what you're shooting. Um, we show replay viewers afterwards, so you can also tell if you've made something that's good enough to stand by itself by measuring the number of replay viewers. But in terms of a sweet spot, if there's anything that we could share, it's probably one to three minutes as a, as a good length sweet spot. Another key thing is um, as the audience grows, so you're, you're standing here broadcasting, you're seeing how many people are hopping on, it's really important to recap when the audience grows. So don't be afraid to say, hey, uh, looks like a lot of people just joined here. Uh, I'm Mike Bettis, meteorologist with the Weather Channel. I'm looking at this crazy tornado, and I'm about to get run over and almost... Uh, die. So if you're telling people what's happening, particularly as they join in, it gives a lot more context. And then some really basic ones. Uh, make sure your Wi-Fi is strong. And don't be afraid to pre-promote. So I've seen one interesting case where people will actually sort of set it up. They'll get the Periscope running. You might end up in the Discover section. Say, hey, in five minutes here at CNBC, uh, during uh, our morning show, we're about to go live on Periscope. So people will hop on, they'll wait. It's a good way to sort of prime the pump. And then rounding out our basic video upload system, this is available to all advertisers and publishers on the platform. It's not a 30 second limit, but a bigger limit with 10 minutes. And there's some extra special features I'll go into, like calls to action that you can add to the video. So if you have any asset in an MOV or MP format, you can upload that to Twitter, send a tweet out, and it's instantly available wherever the tweet goes. The other key thing is the same user experience across video is reachable through this way. So if we think about how to take advantage of, of video on Twitter, it's through different products. Um, what makes Twitter unique? We're mobile, we're live, we're social. Well, let's think about now what users are seeing after you publish. So the Twitter video player is what we call media forward. It sticks out in the timeline. It's one tap away to play it back. Oh, oh, oh stop, right there, right there. Two offensive rebounds and three plays. That's our biggest problem. We just gave up 17. The key thing here is if you've worked with third party players on Twitter, in the past it's taken probably three taps just to get a video to play back. But with native, we're one tap away. Roughly speaking, we see about a 10x lift in the number of views by using the native player. For longer form content, we have a video docking feature, which is pretty cool if you're not just a short burst publisher, but you're publishing something that's, say, two minutes or longer. To the end of physicality. No pressure at all. It's a very Continue close set to the We're going in there and then they have one goal, and you know, that's the win. High hands, high hands. High. Another key thing about a native player is all of the native engagement buttons that come with the player. So as you tap play, we can control the UI around the clip. I can favorite the video. Everybody, I can, it. I can bet it. Prepare to rock. And then we know by data that people are more en are engaging more with the native player. It's almost a 3x lift across replies, retweets, and favorites. Another native feature that comes with the player is the ability to drive people into a view more section. So every video that you've published on the Twitter is available when tapping this. So at the end of the video, by default, you'll see a view more video button that drives me directly to view more videos.
I'm so scared. So on average, folks are viewing three additional view videos that make it to the view more section. Another thing here is um, the more advanced publishers and advertisers are utilizing calls to action. So natively, you get a call to action directly in the player to watch now or visit a website. And then additionally, we'll give you all the analytics, impressions, click-through rate on all of those custom call to action links. So here, GoPro is driving people to a longer form video on their website. We pop a browser, take the user directly there. And then finally, I've mentioned where, t where the tweet goes, so does your video. So this is a PGA Tour video of Tiger chipping in from a tournament last year. And this is embedded on a website. So I can tap play on the video, plays back perfectly in line. This is just through a basic embed code that you can add to your website. But the new feature here is as you hover, you can actually see the tweet context. And it's a great reason to, pump to actually allow your videos to be embedded because we can drive traffic back to your profile page where you can gain new followers and more engagement. Cool. So I'm going to dive into how video goes further through either promoting the video yourself or through an amplified partnership where brands are coming together to distribute content more widely. I'll start with two cases. So on the left is Amplify, and on the right is our promoted video product. Both of them are CPV based. So both of these cases in the left here, Heineken is paying a cost per view when their pre-roll plays. And on the right, Heineken has their own media. They upload this through ads.twitter.com. They bid on a CPV basis and they drive distribution. So you'll see a short pre-roll from Heineken here followed by a clip that was clipped up using Snappy by the US Open. So I love that. That's, that's a pre-roll on Twitter. Super short, engaging, designed for mobile, integrated. It sounds like a tennis match. Um, it's not too annoying. I'll play it again. So Heineken gets their sponsorship across, followed by this great clip. It's out. Unbelievable. And Nishikori has his greatest day. And then with promoted video, Heineken worked with their creative agency to produce this longer spot. And they just give you another example of what promoted video looks like in the timeline. So Budweiser is the advertiser. This is a promoted by Budweiser tweet directly in users' timelines. They are using Twitter's targeting features that every advertiser has available to target this video. So imagine you're an advertiser, you want to reach iPhone users in Florida interested in sports. You can combine all the targeting features on our platform just to find that bucket and this is what they'll see in their timeline. Welcome home, buddy. You and me, we were made for love. A lifetime is not long enough to show you what you mean to me. Ooh, I'll be waiting here for you. So great content leads to more engagement. And native content leads to more engagement because it's one tap away to retweet. Great example here with Budweiser is a six to, earned, six to one earned to paid ratio. So for every paid view, they got six free views, which really pushes down your overall marketing metric of a CPV. Key point about these other advertisers is that these videos are over a minute long, and each of them also earned about a five to one earned to paid ratio. When we launched promoted video, we thought we'd see a lot of 15s, a lot of 30s, repurposed stuff.
but really, really surprised to see the length, particularly the Nike soccer video. This video had about an 85% completion rate, and it was four minutes long. So measurement. The product is new, but we want to make sure that users are happy with these ads in their timeline. So we did a study with Nielsen where we actually measured facial expressions in two different cases. The first case was an interstitial ad, the same 30-second ad shown in between while the program was running. We measured emotional engagement on the bottom. That's the interstitial. Now, the same 30-second ad, but put in the Twitter native player, where users chose to tap play, a much higher emotional engagement. So that's directly for advertisers, promoted video, or publishers who are seeking to drive targeted views with their owned media. With Amplify, it's a sponsorship opportunity, and it really sings when it's combined with live content. So here's how Amplify works. Something amazing happens on TV or in the world, and the publisher who has the rights tweets that out. The pre-roll is assigned to the clip, and the advertiser drives it to targeted fans on Twitter. What I'm really excited to share is that we've made Amplify even faster and easier for advertisers. So we're calling it Auto Amplify. Three steps. The advertiser uploads a pre-roll and chooses their targeting. Second step, publisher puts the video into a pre-selected program. Third step, Amplify takes over. Instantly, the video reaches its targeted audience. And so speed matters, particularly when there's a massive conversation about something that just happened on TV. And here's why speed matters. We looked at hundreds of thousands of events on TV and hundreds of thousands of tweets about that TV event. And we found that the later you wait to promote or post a tweet, the less likely you'll be retweeted. And we're just looking at 45 minutes out. So your sweet spot is right around five to 10 minutes. If you promote or get that tweet out, you'll reach up to 100% of your retweet potential. And more retweets, like we saw with the case of Budweiser, means more earned media and better performing campaigns. So what I love about this is that it happened naturally about a year ago. So this isn't uh, from this year's playoffs, um, but I love this example because it sort of combines everything that we've been talking about into one holistic use case. On the bottom here is the conversation on Twitter about this specific game. Chris Palmer tweets, Kawhi Leonard in the spin cycle. That was smooth. That happened at 11 o'clock Eastern. Two minutes later, the NBA used Snappy TV to publish this clip out. And they attached a champs pre-roll as part of an Amplify campaign to sponsor that little video. <laughs> So Twitter erupted, NBA and Champs bring you this amazing moment. And then sort of nirvana for a marketer. Someone watching, Alonzo Harris, says, damn, that was quick. So fans are noticing when you get something out fast. And I dug into Alonzo's account. He has about 10,000 followers. So 10,000 extra people just watched this clip sponsored by Champs. So quick update on where we are with Amplify. Over 150 premium publishers on the platform right now, half of which are outside the US. We're seeing a big surge in non-sports content. So I know I've been showing you a lot of live. That, that model works. It's proven. But we're starting to see as many programs out there from non-sports content, which is great to see. So I'm wrapping up here. Uh, I think we've got time for Q&A, but I want to leave you with one more video since this is a video conference. I challenge you to give me five votes. Official sound of the NBA. Girls, you can't get your first. Monogamy 
for your time. Okay, we've got time for some questions. Which CDN providers are you using for your video uh, platform? I'm sorry? Which CDN providers are you using for video? CDN providers? Yeah. Uh, we've uh, rolled our own. So we've got our own stack for that. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. Very good talk. Which uh, tools would you recommend? What are our options for uploading and sharing videos that are made in advance? Uh, filmed in advance, edited separately in advance, versus capturing them on a native device like on mobile? Sure. Which tools are best for VOD clips? Yeah. You uh, got two options. Uh, Snappy TV supports VOD upload um, up to 10 minutes in length. And you can do all the bells and whistles that you want, uh, call to action, omniture tag, ad server tag, whatever you need. And then video.twitter, which is our own basic video CMS. Those are the two tools. Yeah. Um, particularly with regard to Periscope, have you got a strategy for um, managing rights and retransmission of other, people con other people's content uh, through Periscope and through Twitter? Sure. So uh, first and foremost, I um, want to say that we don't condone it um, in any means. Uh, we have a process in place. Uh, you can always send an email to copyright at periscope.tv, and our team looks at that for a DMCA compliant report, uh, and we take things down immediately. We're always improving our tools, um, and we're two months in here, so we want to work with partners on uh, building the best process for this. Hi. Uh, the videos that you deliver over your uh, app, uh, what formats are they in, and what bit rates do you deliver? I don't know the bit rates that we're delivering. Um, to the user through the player. Um, I, ha I can send you some very detailed specs afterwards for, for best format, but really any MOV or MP4 uploaded up to 10 minutes. Um, max size is about a gig. Hopefully it's under a gig. Um, that's all I can share right now. Still have time for a couple questions. Yep, right here. Thank you. Besides sports, what content areas do you see a growth rate in? Sure. So we see a lot of growth in TV and entertainment. Um, a lot of our TV providers, take NBC for example, are starting to publish uh, a lot more show clips, uh, behind the scenes stuff, um, not necessarily applying the instant replay model, but um, kind, of, kind of putting a specific spin on the content. Um, lip sync battle that you saw there was more of an instant replay model. So TV and entertainment, um, also big growth in, and we've developed a whole new vertical for this called new business um, around MCNs. So a lot of the, the talent that's on Twitter sees insane engagement rates for their content, right? You might follow a show handle, like a TV show, but if you're following talent, you're interested in everything that they put out. So that's why those programs are, are very engaging and perform really well. Uh, hi. Um, sorry. Me again. Yeah. Uh, let's get, uh, again, on video, um, I think we're a couple, just a couple of months into the launch of the native video player. What were, what have, been, have there been any surprises, uh, any surprising findings compared to maybe the expectations that you had going into it? Thank you. Sure. Um, one is the uh, number of videos uploaded and published, which I can't share, but we are very surprised to see. Um, very happy with the performance there. Um, secondly, uh, one of the key use cases that, um, that companies, or I'll say just companies in general, uh, a lot of advertisers or people have products. Twitter was always used as a, as a sort of great vehicle for comms and Q&A, right? You, you probably write to Virgin America to say like, hey, I, I'd love to get on this flight to San Francisco right now. Um, and they're there. Uh, the good companies have a way to respond to you. So a lot of them are using it as a means to answer questions with a video. They're personalizing, you know, the comms department um, at different companies. So you can put your own personal spin on a, 
on, a, on a replying to a question via Twitter. It appears you put a lot of emphasis on the internal platforms that uh, Twitter is developing. Could you talk a little bit about uh, your approach to APIs and to what extent you'll be welcoming or embracing content from other platforms? And just generally, are we, are we going to expect Twitter to become more open or more closed in that regard? Sure. So with respect to APIs and video, uh, we actually have a uh, sort of 0 0.1 version of uh, the API available out there now. And the same thing for photos and for GIFs. Um, by the way, I didn't go into GIFs because it, it might have been sacrilege to do so at a video conference, but we see insane engagement right there. Um, and they're super lightweight. So we do have a, a way to do that, and we're, we're going to continue to develop something soon to make it super easy for publishers to, say, publish from their own CMS. Our, our whole goal is to make it turnkey, make it very easy, uh, on the publishing end of things. Um, after that, our job is to make sure that content's discovered, and then the shared one is monetization after that. Does that answer? Time for maybe one more question. Um, what, like, core video player uh, have you like rolled out your own kind of player, or are you using any third party like video JS? Sure. Stuff like that. So, the big headline, if there's anything to take away from what I just said, is we have our own player, finally. There's a Twitter video player that's native to the platform. No matter where or how you publish, it utilizes that player. We can do things with the, the, the video asset, like call to action, view more buttons. Uh, we could even test autoplay. Since it's the player, we can help control the UI. Key thing about having our own player also, which has been missing for a long time, is the analytics. You now can see how many views you get from videos you publish, whereas before with third-party players, you kind of had to guess, uh, and you're probably double counting. Um, and so uh, we can control that experience. We can include ads with you together in that. So there's a whole world of opportunities. So yeah, there is a Twitter video player. So the question is, is there any chance of making the, the player open source? Yeah, like any, any like support or like, yeah, open source essentially. I'd say the closest thing to that is uh, the, the Twitter API, which you would be able to use to filter and find videos and embed those videos. So we have a basic O embed to put the video anywhere. Um, through Fabric, which is our main SDK, if you're a mobile app developer, you would be able to surface and show tweets, including videos directly in your app. So it's mainly through embed and, and APIs. But that is, that is bringing the player with it and that same great user experience. All right, another round of applause for our keynote. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.